I'm not sure about you, but growing up, I never had the opportunity to play my PS1s, my Game Boys, my Game Boy Colors. Even when I got one, I couldn't look after it. So there was always a part of me that missed out on the whole games. And it got me thinking, if Soldier Boy could be cranking up that production line, make games consoles, I mean, how hard would it be for me to, to make his own games console? And in this video, I wanna try and explore how easy that might be. So we begin with the first item, the Raspberry Pi. A small computer that is really cheap. Pi, low power, small, efficient, emulates pretty well. A lot of forums out there would support if needs be. But Anybody can just take a Raspberry Pi and, and then play games on it. It didn't make any sense, which leads me to my next item. I don't even know if the company name is right, but it's branded as One Up. All it is is a unit with the battery, the buttons, the screen, and these GPI pins that you just mate the Raspberry Pi together with, and then you got yourself a full bred games console. It's a little bit chunky, but the advantage to it being chunky would be that you get full access to all the ports, and you can use it as like a regular Raspberry Pi anyway if you don't choose to use it as a computer. And I thought to myself this was the simplest solution. It was a cheaper solution than going the other routes as well. And well, I thought it would be a nice gamble. So first things first, we've got to open up the case. I decided to put the Raspberry Pi and attach it to the back of the case. And, and, and boy, boy was I so wrong. It turns out that the screws for the Raspberry Pi that attached to the case also affixed the Raspberry Pi to the case. And even when I try to put it back on, oh my God, 20 minutes it took to finally get the Raspberry Pi together to make sure that I hadn't screwed anything up, all the sides being put together, uh, and making sure that all the ports are, are where they're meant to be. So after finally assembling the system, it looked like I had a good job, everything was sorted, piss easy, you know, nothing, nothing to write about, you know, child's play. And, and child's play is not the right thought here because it was not the case. And the screen doesn't turn on. Now I did plug this into an external monitor and yeah, it was working, so I didn't, didn't screw it up. The buttons on the unit weren't working and I tried pressing everything and, and nothing happened there. Um, so it got me thinking. Okay, so with everything else that I've done and putting it all together finally, it turns out I'm missing something. You see, this cable over here, I didn't think very much of it, but it turns out this over here connects to this port over here. And that itself is just USB, which piggybacks off one of these connectors over here. All this is gonna do is USB connect that to the main board. And that's how you get all these buttons to work here. And I assume even the touch screen over here. Now I need to solder that because, well, well, what a freaking genius thing to do. Uh, and uh, well, I don't have any soldering kit. I ended up having to pick a quick shopping list for things to get soldered. Hopefully this comes in the next few days so I can just get this all done and over with and play some games. So at this point, two days elapsed. Everything I needed came in the post. So I had to go back, remove the Raspberry Pi from the unit and remove the Raspberry Pi from, well, the housing. And, and that in its own right was just frustrating. I mean, bits going everywhere, just losing my freaking shit with that. But finally I got it off. Now, like I said, there were no instructions with this unit. So I only had the reference pictures from the eBay seller's page. Luckily, they were descriptive enough. Could have at least came with a manual, guys. I mean, come on, like, what am I to you, a psychic? I had to carefully follow these reference pictures just to make sure that I don't screw it up, sold in the wires, make sure I can get them you know, nicely aligned. What I don't get is that obviously the, the black wire had to jump across a little longer in distance and it made like the whole arrangement a little bit awkward. But I mean, hey, I can live with it. I don't mind. So off camera, I just cleaned off the remaining flux. You just use some alcohol and brush it off and wipe it and make sure it's all clean and it's flux free. And I decided it's about time to put this bitch back together and see what we got. Let's play some games. Hold up. At the time of doing this video, it was a very different setting. When I finally finished the soldering and putting the unit back together, I still couldn't get the screen to work. I decided that's it, this is a write-off. So I put it in a jiffy bag, I dumped it in a drawer, and I just didn't really think about it for a couple of days. And now this was partially down to my own ignorance, not knowing like how Raspberry Pi works. And the other part was as well, 
It doesn't help when you buy something without documentation and without links to support. The other thing as well that I missed to point out was what I was using on the Raspberry Pi to make this whole project work. So before I go any further with this video, I'll explain really quickly. So I decided to use the RetroPie project. Now RetroPie has become very popular with the Raspberry Pi platform. This is partially due to the inexpensive nature of the Raspberry Pi, but for the fact that emulation or retro games consoles don't really need that much power and it would be overkill to be using a conventional gaming desktop or, or gaming laptop. Now this in turn has turned it into a popular platform to use for emulating PS1, Nintendo 64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, SNES, NES. Now I probably haven't named all the system but there's roughly 53 different games consoles that can be emulated. So we now got the hardware, we got the software and um, well Let's get back to it. So a few days after wrapping up the project, I decided to just give it another try. The main issue I had was getting the screen to work with the unit. And I couldn't do that because I didn't have drivers for the screen to work. At the same time, I needed to configure the RetroPie configuration file, uh, which I couldn't do that if I didn't have the right parameters. Now, I did search up the numbers on the back of the LCD. And I didn't find anything. I did scour the eBay page where I bought it from. But when I searched the unit up, I came across an obscure form and I think it was either French, Dutch or whatever. Now, through the form, I had to backtrack from the latest post going to the oldest post and I came across some people having the same issues as me. And what they discovered was that the same item was being sold on a Chinese marketplace. Now, I went to the Chinese marketplace online, couldn't find any details on there. Plus, Google Translator wasn't really translating uh, Chinese very well. As I continued to look through the form, I actually came across an email for the original developer of the one Up Pix Retro Games Console handheld thing. I dropped the guy an email, I just made it very clear I bought this device from eBay and you know I need help trying to get the screen to work. A couple of days later I received the driver and also the text with the configuration file. Long story short, I downloaded the latest version of RetroPie, written it to the SD card and then I mounted it on the computer again. I went into the boot partition of the drive and then I dropped in the driver in its respective folder and I also edited the configuration file on the computer instead of you know trying to do it on the Raspberry Pi plugging a keyboard and mouse. It's just messy, it's absolutely messy. The best tip I can say is do it on the computer before you do it on the Pi. After that, I plugged it into the Raspberry Pi and by God, I was so amazed. I was so relieved this thing booted. I'm not gonna go into this into depth, but there is an issue between the legality of owning ROMs, but be sure to do your own research in your respective territories and countries just so you don't get any legal issues. This is the unit, and I finally got it to work after I dropped all the files. What you gotta do is flip the switch on the top and it starts turning on right here. Overall, this device feels plastic with its quality and the way that it's been put together. Booting up the device is a bit slow and strangely, if you use the internal speaker that comes with this, you're gonna hear a lot of noise. If you can look past the fact of a lot of noise, getting into the gameplay of the device is a lot of fun. Right here is gonna be a 2.8 inch IPS display running at HG, what? what? HVGA resolution. Allegedly, it's running at 60 frames per second, though I really doubt it's 60 frames per second or even 60 hertz for the matter, since I had noticed some artifacting while sprites were moving on the screen playing certain games. Another thing as well to mention is that this is a touchscreen, but unfortunately this touchscreen doesn't seem to work for me. I really wanted to play some Nintendo 64, but unfortunately this little joystick over here doesn't want to work. The ergonomics are absolutely terrible, the sides dig into your hands, the corners also dig into your palms, and you also may have noticed that I cracked the, uh, the Perspex a little bit, which is also not a good thing, um, provided that you don't rub your hands against it and, and cut your hand open. Overall, for £76, this has been worth it in my opinion. I still get to use the Raspberry Pi as normal, I get a battery to use it remotely as well, plus I get to play games on it. And I mean, this is much cheaper than some of the other solutions and products out there. Plus, I've got to do it myself. And I get the satisfaction doing something for myself. And that's, that's, that's what you've got to, got to enjoy. The only things that would have made this project much easier if the drivers, the documentation and instruction set, and also the configuration for RetroPie were publicly available. The one thing that does wind me up is the lack of documentation and also the lack of these drivers being publicly available, including those for configuration code. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and also comment below. And uh, let me know what you think. Anyway, peace.